Hello and welcome to all. Myself Lekur Rahman. Students, today we are going to study prokaryote and eukaryotic cell types. Before we can move forward, you need to know that all organisms, living things are made of cells. Most of the organisms you are familiar with are multicellular, made up of many cells. However, some organisms can be unicellular, made up of only one cell. Its entire body is just one super tiny cell. Cells falls into one of the two categories. It can be the prokaryotes or eukaryotes. And this is it. Every organisms on the planet can be put into one of these two categories, including you. Pro means no. Now why no? Let's see. Prokaryotes are basically unicellular microorganisms. They lack a distinct nucleus. They lack membrane-bound organelles. And they are always bacteria. And very simple and small. Here you can see the diagrams of prokaryotes. These diagrams are very well-defined prokaryotic cell diagram. Moving forward, we'll see U means true. Now why true? We'll see. Eukaryotes are unicellular or multicellular organisms. They have nucleus and have membrane-bound organelles. They are larger and more complex and have more stuff inside. Examples, animals, plants, fungi and protists. And they are never bacteria. Here you can see a very well-defined eukaryotic cell. Like the organs in your body, much of the organelles are inside the cells. Such organelles like in human body you have lungs, hearts. Similarly, your cells body also have organs or organelles. Here you can see a well-defined eukaryotic cell diagram on nerve cell and plant cell. Moving forward, we'll see prokaryotes are much smaller as compared to eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are bacteria. In this diagram, you can see the bacterial cell which are very much smaller as compared to the other diagram which is eukaryotic or animal cell. In this, you can see the nucleus and cytoplasm and plasma membrane. Now we'll see the differentiation of prokaryotes and eukaryotes and the organelles how they are differentiated and bifurcated. In prokaryotes, they lack nucleus but eukaryotes has nucleus. Prokaryotes, organelles lack membrane but in eukaryotes, organelles have membrane. In prokaryotes, DNA is free floating and in eukaryotes, DNA is in the nucleus. Prokaryotes are also always unicellular. Eukaryotes can be unicellular or multicellular. Prokaryotes are always bacteria. Eukaryotes may be plants, animals, fungi and protists. Prokaryotes are very smaller in structure as compared to the eukaryotes and the reproduction is asexual and in eukaryotes reproduction may be asexual or sexual. Now we will see the internal organization. Cell contains organelles as we studied earlier that as like human organs the cells too have organs. These organs perform specific functions for the cell. First, we will see the plasma membrane, the boundary of the cell. Plasma membrane is basically the boundary of the cell. It is composed of three distinct layers, two layers of fat and one layer of protein. In this diagram, you can very well see the three distinct layers of the plasma membrane. Next is the nucleus. Nucleus is the brain of the cell. It is bordered by a porous membrane called as nuclear envelope. It contains thin fibers of DNA and protein called chromatin. It is rod-shaped chromosomes and contains small round nucleus. It produces ribosomes RNA which may ribosomal RNA which makes the ribosomes. Now we'll see the ribosomes. Ribosomes are small non-membrane bound organelles. It contains two subunits. It is a site for protein synthesis. We can say it is the protein factory of the cell. It is either free floating or it is either attached to endoplasmic reticulum. 
endoplasmic reticulum is a complex network of transport channels. Endoplasmic reticulum are of two types, smooth and rough. Smooth ribosome free, the ribosomes are free and functions in poison detection. And in rough, it contains ribosomes and releases newly made proteins from the cell. Next is Golgi apparatus. It is basically a series of flattened sacs that modifies packaging, stores and it transports material out of the cells. It works with ribosomes and endoplasmic reticulum and these three together makes our transport system. Our next set is lysosomes. Okay? Lysosomes are basically also called as the suicidal bags. It is the recycling center, recycle cellular debris. It is a membrane bound organelle containing variety of enzymes. The internal pH is 5. It is acidic because it needs to digest the enzymes. It helps digest food particles inside or outside of the cell. The next is centriole. It is found only in animal cells. It is paired organelles found together near the nucleus at the right angles to each other. What is the role of centrioles? It helps in building cilia and flagella. It plays a role in cellular reproduction also. Now, the next diagram. Students, look at this diagram. You can see all the different organelles between this. So, how these organelles I keep standing what is the diff uh, structure of this organelle how it is able to maintain its structure it is because of the cytoskeleton by the name itself you can see the skeleton means the structure which helps them to maintain their cell structure it is a framework of cell contains small microfilaments and larger microtubules and they support the cell giving it its shape and help with the movement of its organelles. The, the next is the mitochondrion. Mitochondrion or mitochondria basically it is the powerhouse of the cell. It generates power. It is a double membranous. It is the same size as of the bacterium cell and it contains its own DNA and mDNA and it produces high energy compound called as ATP adenosine triphosphate. Now our next organelle is the chloroplast. Chloroplast is a double membrane structure. The center section contains the grana. The thylakoid or the coins like sacking structure it makes up the entire grana and the stroma is the gel like material surrounding the grana and this organelle is found in plants and algae now our next is vacuole okay so vacuole by the name itself you can identify it is a sac that helps in food digestion or helping the cell maintain its water balance and it is found mostly in plants and protest so this is it for our today's lecture thank you so much for thank you so much students